This is an Algebra 1 class where we're using factoring to solve problems involving quadratic equations. One of the applications we're going to look at is the vertical motion problem. In the vertical motion problem, the height and feet of a projectile can be modeled by this equation. Now, a projectile, before we get to the equation, a projectile is something that is thrown up into the air. So it could be a basketball or a discus or a missile that is launched into the air. So the vertical height of this projectile is equal to negative 16t squared plus vt plus s, where t is time in seconds, v is the velocity in feet per second, that is the vertical velocity in feet per second, and s is the starting height above the ground. In example one here, we have an athlete that throws the discus from an initial height of six feet with an initial vertical velocity of 46 feet per second. In part A, we want to write an equation that gives the height in feet of the discus as a function of the time since it's left the athlete's hand. So let's take a look at the numbers that we have here in our Example here, we have an initial height of six feet, so S is going to be six feet. We have an initial vertical velocity of 46 feet per second, so V is 46 feet per second. So let's use those numbers into our equation, and we get H is equal to negative 16T squared plus 46T plus six. In part B, we want to answer the question, after how many seconds does it hit the ground? Our question is asking us for time in seconds. So time is our unknown. We don't know what that is, but we do know that it hits the ground. When something hits the ground, its height above the ground is zero. It's on the ground. It is zero feet above the ground. So putting zero in for h into our equation, we have zero equals negative 16t squared plus 46t plus six. We want to use the zero product rule. We want to use factoring to solve this. One side is equal to zero as required, and we want to factor this trinomial. As we start factoring this, we notice two things. Our first term, our leading coefficient, is negative, and each one of the terms has a common factor of 2. So let's factor out of this trinomial the greatest common factor of negative 2. When I do that, I get 0 equals negative 2 times, and again, I'm dividing each term by negative 2. So negative 16t squared divided by negative 2 is positive 8t squared. 46t divided by negative 2 is negative 23t. And 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Now we want to factor this binomial or this trinomial into two binomials. We need to look at our first term. 8t squared and its factors, and the last term, negative 3, and its factors. Our possibilities for 8t squared would be 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. And our possibilities for negative 3 are 1 and 3 with 1 positive and 1 negative. We want to match up this binomial, so our inner term and our outer term add up to the middle term of negative 23t. Well, our last term here, our choices are pretty simple. We have to have a 1 and a 3. So let's put our 1 and 3 in to get our last term. This term right here would be our last. I know one of these is negative, but I don't know which one yet. So let's leave that open for now. Our factors. For our first term, 8t squared, our choices are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. And my goal is to match them out with up with the outer and the inner to get negative 23t. 
So as I look at my choices, I see that three times the eight is gonna get us awfully close to my goal of negative 23. So let's put the eight T and the one T in these positions with the eight T multiplied by the three, which would be the 24 T and the one multiplied to one T giving us one T. My goal is that we get negative 23. So this term 24 has to be the negative choice. And we get this from 8t times negative 3. And then the other term, we remember we had one plus, one minus. So the positive term, the plus term has to be plus 1. OK, so now we have the equation 0 equals negative 2 times the binomial 8t plus 1 multiplied by the binomial t minus 3. We want to set each of the factors equal to 0. Well, negative 2 can't be 0, so let's move to the factor 8t plus 1. 8t plus 1 could be 0, or the factor t minus 3 could be 0. Solving by 8t plus 1 equal to 0 by subtracting 1 from both sides and then dividing by 8 gives us t equals negative 1 8th. Solving t minus 3 equal to 0 by adding 3, so we get t is equal to 3. When I look at these choices, t equals negative 1 8th is before the discus is actually thrown. We can't have the negative time, so that one doesn't work. So t equal to 3 seconds is how long it takes the discus to leave the hand of the athlete, go up into the air, and hit the ground. Our next part says, how long would it take the discus to reach of 6 feet on the way back down? Well. The discus leaves the athlete's hand at six feet above the ground, and so we want it to come back to a height of six feet. That is before it hits the ground. So in this case, our height, h, is six feet, and we're looking for how long. So again, we're looking for time. Let's put six in for h into our equation. So we have six equals negative 16 t squared, plus 46t plus 6. In order to use the zero product rule, we have to get one side equal to zero. So let's subtract 6 from both sides, giving us 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 46t. In this case, we don't have a trinomial. We only have two terms. And these two terms have a greatest common factor. So let's factor using the greatest common factor. Each term has a factor of t in common, and the numbers, the coefficients, have a factor of 2 or negative 2 in common. So let's use a greatest common factor of negative 2t. So factoring out the negative 2t, dividing, we have negative 16t squared divided by negative 2 is 8t. We have 46t divided by negative 2t is negative 23. Setting each factor equal to 0. Well, again, negative 2 can't be 0, but t could be 0. Or 8t minus 23 could be 0. Solving 8t minus 23 equals 0 by adding 23 to both sides and dividing by 8. We get t is equal to 2.875. Well, t equals 0 is our start, so that's not how long it takes to get to 6 feet on the way back down. So our only answer then has to be t is equal to 2.875 seconds. Let's do another problem. This time, let's do a problem involving some geometry. We have a rectangle. And the length of this rectangle is 13 more than 3 times its width. And the area is going to be 10 square centimeters. In part A, all we want to do is write an expression for the length of the rectangle. 
So I know what the length is in terms of the width or in relation to its width. So if we start with W equal to the width, then we can use that to figure out the length. The length is going to be 13 meters more than three times its width. So 13 more than three times the width is equal to the length. So an expression for the length is 13 plus 3w. It says we want to label the rectangle. So here's our width and here's our length. We can rewrite our length in standard form as 3w plus 13. Now in part B, we want to write an equation for the area of the rectangle and then solve it to find the width. Well, we know that area is equal to base times height. And we're told that the area is 10. So we have 10 equal. Our base is 3w plus 13. And our height is w. So let's distribute on the right-hand side. We have w times 3w is 3w squared. w times 13 is 13w. So we have 10 equals 3w squared plus 13w. In order to solve using factor, factoring, we're using the zero product rule. We need one side to be equal to zero. So subtract 10 from both sides. We get zero equals 3w squared plus 13w minus 10. We always look for common factors before starting to factor a trinomial into two binomials, and I don't see a common factor with 3, 13, and 10, so we don't have a common factor other than 1. So let's factor this into two binomials. And in order to do that, we look at our first term, which is 3w squared. Our choices are 3 and 1. Our last term of negative 10, our choices are 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and since 10 is negative, we know it, we need one of each pair to be a positive and one to be a negative. Then for our inner term of 13w, our middle term, we know our outer and inner have to add up to that middle term of 13w. So we have to place our factors, pair them up, so that we get a middle term of 13w. With the 3 and 1, we only have one choice, so let's make it 3w and 1w. This is our first term to get 3w squared. And now for our last term to get negative 10, we need to place our factors as the second term of each binomial, and our goal is to hit 13w. So as I think about terms that multiply and add to get 13, I'm looking at the 3 and the 5 is 15. And if I subtract 2 times 1, I'm going to get 13. So the 3w multiplied by the 5, the 1w multiplied by the 2, inner is 2w, outer is 15w, but remember, one of those has to be negative, so I need a negative 2w to add to 15w to get positive 13. So the 2 is our negative factor, and the 5 is our positive factor. So now we have the equation 0 equals 3w minus 2 times the binomial w plus 5. Set each factor equal to 0. 3w minus 2 equal to 0, or w plus 5 equals 0. Solving 3w minus 2 equal to 0 by adding 2 and dividing by 3 gives us w equals 2 thirds. Solving w plus 5 equal to 0 by subtracting both sides by 5, we get w equals negative 5. If I look at these two possibilities, w equal to negative 5 gives us a width of a negative number. We can't have a width of a negative number, so our width has to be 2 thirds of a meter. 
and that's our applications of solving equations, uh, quadratic equations using factoring.